I call the honourable member Asanati Lole Taylor. Thank Malo you, Su Thomas. Fua. Faftai lava, fakawelahi, and meitaki maata. Fatala fatu le paia male malu. Malo Su Fua malangi ma. Paia ol mautifono ya mai se fo i ol aubalaulia. Ki orana i orana talo fakoto talo hani malo ni. Fakalo fala yatu kamna mauri alo. Hello, Oloketa, Kia ora tātou katoa, and of course, warm Pacific greetings. Mr. Speaker, life is a dream for the wise, a game for the, for the fool, and there are many of them in some part of the house, a comedy for the rich, and a tragedy for the poor, who are struggling with the unemployment rates in our country right now. It is wonderful to have our families, our friends, and our people from the Pacific here today. Yeah, feel my, my, my welcome. Let me start by saying that parliamentarians in the Pacific region must ensure that their policy machinery is going to benefit the local communities, the ones who matter, the people. The Pacific Forum that New Zealand is hosting this weekend is a perfect platform for us to exchange experiences and learn from each other. It is also a chance where we can exchange expert knowledge that will assist in eliminating barriers which continue to prevent leadership in the Pacific region from making progress. Good leadership governance and democracy are essential for enabling people to live enjoyable lives in the Pacific. There is a need, not a want, there is a need to emphasize the importance of participative democracy and how this will contribute to the strengthening of our economic, social and political development regional development benefiting from the Pacific plan and strategies will require a more inclusive network that is well informed and open to different viewpoints that might have traditionally been ignored. There needs to be a shift in our mentality from leadership that is biased and tainted by exclusionary norms. Civil society has a vital role to play in ensuring that political leadership and credibility is held accountable for the policies and strategies that are put in place. People in local communities need to be kept in the know and also afforded the platform to engage in dialogue and discussions on matters that affect them. The Pacific Plan is everyone's business and it's, in, it's paramount that all stakeholders concerned, <coughs> that's all of us, are able to voice their concerns and add more value and weight to the issue that directly affects them. As people of the Pacific, you realize that um, our mistrust of the future makes it hard to give up the past. As Pacific people, history has taught us many lessons that we will not forget. In some respects, we have been more fortunate than others. Many Pacific Islands were colonized in a time when the great powers realized that they had a responsibility to not only take, but also to give back. I look at my own country of origin and the periods of colonization, firstly under Germany and then under the New Zealand administration. Inevitably, these administrations brought misery and hardship to many Samoans. However, they also brought infrastructure, roads, schools, powers, hospitals, transportation, 
telecommunication trades and more. It enabled many of our people to step into the global village with some confidence as our forefathers looked beyond the shores of our many islands as they saw at that time an opportunity to better themselves and their children. Most Pacific people understand that their special relationships with both New Zealand and Australia are something that should be valued and maintained. We have seen economic expansion of, uh, or an influence of our Asian neighbours. We can only look on in awe in recent years as these economic giants spread their hands across the Pacific. Successive New Zealand governments are beginning to understand that they can no longer take their nearest neighbours for granted if we are to maintain our unique strategic, economic and cultural ties. I fully understand why France and the United States take their Pacific protectorates very, very seriously. In a modern world, the islands of the Pacific have a unique opportunity, not only as in the past to supply New Zealand and Australia with a labour force, but also a nearby warm and welcoming holiday destination. Our Pacific neighbours are in a special position that gives the opportunity to take the best of the West and East and maintain the unique friendships and relationships that have developed over many years. If New Zealand fails to recognise and support the importance of their position in our world, then we undoubtedly lose much of the unique character that makes our New Zealand and our Pacific neighbours a special unique place in our global village. One of the main issues that are confronting the Pacific region is equality. Participative democracy and women go hand in hand with governance. And given that I am the only Pacific Island woman in Parliament at this term, and also the first woman MP born outside of New Zealand, I think I have every right to advocate for this particular topic to be discussed in this House. I hear Michael Woodward would like to correct something that I have said. Woodhouse? I happen to be referring to the Pacific. Michael Woodhouse. Thank you. <laughs> it allows the process of democracy to fully capture a nation's development needs and solutions to these needs. For years now, women have been left firmly at the margins and have been excluded from sitting in on decision-making processes, or if they are, they have little room to manoeuvre themselves because political authority is still very much a man's world. We fail to realise that women make up half the Pacific population. This is why their perspective and active participation is essential for good governance and for the process of democracy. Mr. Speaker, collectively, women make up 12% of parliamentary seats in the Pacific Islands. And if we exclude the French territories, that figure would fall to a mere 5%. And New Zealand has a responsibility to play a role in this area. Doesn't help with the budget cuts of the MFET at the moment. Participation should be viewed as a measure from which we can assess good governance. This will ensure that the process of democracy is not tainted and that political credibility is in fact credible. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Alfred Naro. Greetings um, to everyone here. 